we usher in the new year, we take a look back at some of our most memorable stories from 2019. We begin with Delane Cleveland and a profile on a very unique Maple Grove animal shelter. Few things in life are more adorable than the presence of kittens. Just ask Sam Jackson. I'm constantly sending pictures out and posting stuff. Cuteness is in abundance at her Maple Grove home with about 20 Ouch. tiny furry felines scampering around almost every room of her house. I like to keep a couple different ages. I like older ones. I kind of like to cuddle and snuggle them, but then I also have the bottle babies, so I kind of like to have a little bit of a variety. Jackson is one of 60 people Ouch. volunteering to foster these kittens for the Biddy Kitty Brigade, a Twin Cities rescue organization that provides care for orphaned neonatal kittens in ways that big animal shelters cannot. Caring for orphan neonatal kittens, you do need to be able to feed them and care for them around the clock. So if you do have a full-time job, and a lot of us do have full-time jobs, you need to be able to work from home. Joan Barrett is a co-founder of the Biddy Kitty Brigade. A lot of them wouldn't make it. I mean, if they were left outside, even if they get into an animal control facility, I mean, they don't have staff there 24-7, so they can't provide care for them there, and that's when they reach out to rescue organizations. Since March, she says the organization has taken in about 170 kittens many of whom were at risk of dying or being euthanized. This here is the incubator. So this would be our littlest baby. So we keep babies in here until they're two weeks old, and it just keeps them warm. Every kitten taken in by the Biddy Kitty Brigade is paired with a trained volunteer who can provide the demanding care that's required. That's where Jackson comes in. They like alert each other that it's food time, so everybody's screaming. Jackson recently took in a litter of kittens that were only six days old at the time of our visit. Most of these age will eat about three meals. These guys have been pounding about six to nine. In addition to keeping them warm, Hi, baby. she has to bottle feed them with the syringe filled with formula every couple of hours. After feeding time, she rubs their undersides with a baby wipe so they can answer nature's call. They'll usually yell at you when they're potting. While it can be a lot of work, people who are part of the brigade say it's a worthwhile sacrifice, not only because of the cuteness factor, but because their work is helping to ensure that these kittens ultimately find a forever home. So we keep all of them until they're about 12 weeks old. Um, they get spayed, neutered, all of their vaccinations, rabies, microchipped, the whole works, and then they get adopted out. From animals to old-fashioned ingenuity, here's a profile of a first-of-its-kind event at the Crystal Airport. There's a lot of traffic in and out of Crystal Airport, and most of it uses a lot of runway to take off and land. Approximately 800 feet. But not these guys. Aircraft today, we're, we're landing and taking off in about 400 feet. It's a type of flying called STOL. STOL stands for short takeoff and landing, and uh, they were trying to see who could take off in the shortest dis distance and who could land in the shortest distance. And today's Chris Stoll demonstration event is a celebration of sorts. This kind of flying works best on runways that aren't paved. Crystal has a grass runway, but it came close to losing it when the Metropolitan Airports Commission released a comprehensive plan. One of the recommendations of that comprehensive plan was to eliminate the, the turf. But pilots rallied. Crystal's turf strip is the only public one in the area. Airplanes like these with tail wheels instead of a wheel under the nose do better on grass. Mac listened to the pilots and changed the plan. Being able to save it is really a great asset for the reliever airports in, in Minneapolis, St. Paul. An asset worth celebrating with a day of fun. Not just with the stole demonstration, but a couple of classic planes showed up too. And showed off. The best thing is getting pilots together and getting young people and other people interested in aviation. Airport manager Phil Tiedemann says events like these are rare at Crystal. We couldn't remember or see in our records any anything like this happening before. It could be the start of an annual tradition that blends in fun with sharp piloting skills. We've got a lot of feedback that uh, they want to participate next year and uh, hopefully have a, another good weather weekend next next year that we can do this event all over again. And finally, some of our most memorable stories of 2019 revolved around people. Here's a look at the people who stood out for their commitment to the community. Oh, 
say, can you see? Plymouth's Stephanie Verone has belted out the national anthem and not just city council meetings, but at hundreds of sporting events all around the country. It's one way she gives back. I love singing the song. It's fresh for me every single time. It means a lot to me. And it's an honor to sing it. She eat all people. Some people in our area give back every day. Like Peng Yang, an Osseo school teacher who pioneered a Hmong language program at Park Center High School. For some students, it's this has really um, helped them with their identity. It's helped them open up a different avenue for them to have a bigger dream and to be able to reach for it. Okay, thank you. After 35 years of bringing smiles and laughs to the Osseo Senior Center, Arlene Barrett retired just shy of 92 years of age. Just uh, going to miss them all. They were all very, very kind to me and I was kind to them. They needed a lot of hugs and I was a kind of a hugger. <laughs> the young have a mind to help those around them too, like these Robbinsdale Middle School students who wanted to make Halloween about scaring away hunger. It means that we will be giving all the food donated to show to um, food banks and shelters around the community. And finally, when someone is in need, the community responds in a big way, such as when Jim Wagner, the owner of Wagner's Drive-In, was diagnosed with cancer. Community members organized a fundraiser and people rallied to help. We all just want to know what we could do to help Jim. Here at CCX Media, we look forward to bringing you more stories in 2020, all from the place where you call home. Happy New Year. Wyzetta assistant boys hockey coach Bill Rooney celebrated a major milestone late last week. Rooney was honored in a pregame ceremony at Plymouth Ice Center prior to coaching his 700th game. Rooney has been a high school hockey coach for more than two decades. He was the head coach at Cooper for 18 seasons and has been a Trojan's assistant since 2015. We asked Rooney what keeps him coming back year after year. The love of the, the game and um, just the kids, just being around the kids. It's just fun to teach and uh, um, try to pass on what you've learned and uh, hopefully they do the same when they're older. Rooney's 700th game was a win as Wyzetta beat St. Michael Albertville 7-2. to Our CCX Sports game crew gets back into the swing of things with our first telecasts of 2020 later this week. Friday night, it's a good matchup in boys basketball as Champlain Park hosts Hopkins. See the game live on CCX1 and ccxmedia.org at 7 o'clock Friday night. It also replays at 10 p.m. Friday and Saturday at 1 p.m. and 10 p.m. Saturday afternoon, it's girls hockey as Osseo Park Center takes on Armstrong Cooper. See it live at 3 o'clock Saturday afternoon or catch the replay Saturday at 7 p.m. or Sunday at 10 a.m. or 7 p.m. We're to the end of a pretty memorable year in high school sports in the northwest suburbs. Local teams won titles in the winter, spring, and fall seasons. And there were some amazing individual performances. CCX Sports' Jason Melillo put together some of the best moments. Happy New Year and enjoy. I was like, it's probably going to be a 9-9 nine, nine or a 10. When I saw like three of the scores, I'm like, please be a 10, please be a 10. Otto into the front court. He'll put up an arcing three short. Laporia Chule, Park Center wins section 5 for a 57, 55, and three overtime. I can't even describe it. I'm so emotional right now. See when you used to have hair. First, been consistently good on the boards, and that's a big three. Congratulations to Hopkins High School state champions. Beckers will take it one on one. No, she wants to give it back to her teammate. It's a Championship girls basketball team. Here's Rallon over for the wraparound try. Buckets loose. Stinsley knocks it in. Section champions in girls hockey. Uh, great effort by her. Oh! Uh, Hit number one for Wide Zeta. Now he does swing and miss, and the Hopkins Royals are section six champions. Picked 
up here and a shot oh. in the goal. Speechless, honestly, about uh, what happened. Miller's gonna run it. Miller oh. will break through, and he's gonna go for the touchdown. Jace Miller for 42 and a score, and the Rebels are heading to the prep. Third and goal from the four. Faster getting to the end zone. Now 